Welcome to Twisted Monday. Quick interruption to point out that next week's Twisted Monday stream will begin early, around noon Eastern Standard Time instead of 3 p.m. Also, I will be playing Twisted Metal Black on that stream, even though it is not the final Monday of the month. Please adjust your expectations accordingly. Tune in live at twitch.tv slash saintfiendly if you'd like. And now, enjoy this week's Twisted Monday. So, we're back to head on. Game I like to play. Once a month. Unless that month has five Mondays. Due to a weird arbitrary rule that I gave myself. And for this occasion, I went out of my way to unlock Hammerhead who is unlocked in the second to last level of this game. So I played through the entire game, got to that second to last level, actually beat the minigame, and here we are. Our extravagant prize is a beat-up pick pickup truck on top of monster truck tires. Clearly modified. Let's find out how modified in our full playthrough. But first, let's meet... Catfish, a hunter who is missing many teeth, many fingers, but apparently still a good hunter. He prides himself as the mighty hunter and decided to modify his favorite rig to compete in this year's Twisted Metal. He's hunting the, the deadliest game, etc. Cars. <laughs> After all, it's just another form of hunting. Vehicular style. Catfish's illustrious and often illegal hunting obsession has resulted in the head of every type of big game creature to hang proudly in his favorite trophy room. Now Catfish's ultimate dream is to hunt the most intelligent species in the animal kingdom, the human. I already said all this. Uh, survival of the fittest, fittest in the raw wilderness. There are no levels that take place in any sort of natural settings in this entire game. I'm just now noticing that it's pretty much all urban landscapes. So let's get to some of those urban landscapes. Promptly. Our opening cutscene, I have to skip. We legitimately cannot watch this cutscene. Or else, the band level will begin playing a song. And this video will get a copyright claim. I'll have to edit it. And... No one wants to do that. One way or another, you would not be hearing the song that Level has to play. Go buy their album if you want. I strongly endorse it. If you enjoy new metal from the year 2003, because that is their most recent release. Got a bunch of environmental attacks. Might as well just launch them at random. And get comboed to death by Mr. Slam. Because that is what Mr. Slam does. Very unsurprised. One of the uh, sort of things I like to do when I play these games is figure out where the character stands on the overall power list relative to the other vehicles in that game. And... Uh, Head-on basically does not have a tier list because it's so easy. Doesn't matter how weak your vehicle is, you're still going to have a pretty easy playthrough. The game itself just does not put up much of a fight. But Hammerhead kind of sucks. I don't think this is a very strong vehicle at all. It falls apart very rapidly. Armor doesn't really matter in this game because damage values are through the roof anyway. And it's a gargantuan target that can just get blasted to pieces very rapidly. Not a good trade. Launching my special at Mr. Slam. This. Oh, so close. Not going to use that teleporter. Not going to use anything, apparently. This is one of the hardest levels in the entire game. Or Hammerhead, weirdly enough. Because there is nowhere to hide. Nothing much to do. Just stand and fight and get beaten up by Mr. Slam. I did a little practice run 
to see whether or not this vehicle would be any fun to play as. Because I haven't played as this vehicle since my Let's Play years ago. And, uh, Mr. Slam spawned as one of the enemies in this level. And he beat me up badly. And then he spawned as an enemy in the next level, and he beat me up badly. You don't want to fight Mr. Slam. He's ridiculously overpowered. Pretty much in this entire game. But I promise once we are done with this level, we're actually going to be in pretty good shape. Despite this being one of the worst incarnations of Hammerhead in the series. That is saying a lot, considering the Twisted Metal 2 incarnation. At least in Twisted Metal 2, most vehicles can take a beating. Oh, how did I miss both of them? My area effect is gigantic. There we go. There's the big threat. Might as well get the upgrade point, because if I die, it's all over anyway. Can't lose the upgrade without losing everything. Chat showing up just in time to get this boring level over. Gonna grab all the health refills. I mean, I shouldn't call it so soon. It's looking like we're probably gonna get this level completed. Oh, shielded. That's how you know we're on hard difficulty. The enemies have some self-preservation instincts. Good incarnations of Hammerhead. Twisted Metal 3. Hammerhead is decent. I like it well enough anyway. Two is terrible. Head on, terrible. Gonna save my game for safety. But just roll on through. Because we might still be able to survive. Yeah, our special is very weird. We crafted a jet engine to the back of our pickup truck. This is a real custom job on this car. And we do exactly what Hammerhead did in Small Brawl. One imagines it was probably inspired by Small Brawl. Which, a really cool thing that happened last week, which a lot of people might have missed, I missed it until the very end of uh, the stream, was that the lead designer and one of the artists, same guy, uh, Dave Goodrich, showed up in chat to watch me play another game that he developed, which was um, Vigilante 8 Second Defense. So that was really cool. We got to learn a lot about Small Brawl and Vigilante 8. Direct from the guy who made them. So now I know a lot of weird trivia about Small Brawl that is not well recorded and I didn't know when I did the Small Brawl Let's Play. Maybe I'll do a Small Brawl video again sometime. and dispense that information to a wider audience. And like I said, I noticed that Goodrich Games, which is the Twitch channel for Dave Goodrich, was in chat for most of the playthrough. And I did not put it together that that was Dave Goodrich until after I had completed the entire playthrough and was wrapping things up. I actually signed off and was about to end the stream. And then I had to sign back in to uh, interact with Dave Goodrich for a couple minutes before officially shutting down the stream. Yeah, good stuff. And I was brutally honest throughout that entire playthrough. 
And I probably still would have been brutally honest if I had realized that uh, he was in chat. But uh, he was he was a real good sport about all that. So, yeah, good dude, good designer. Glad to have had his info and input and integration in my stream. Also involvement. I could probably go kill everybody right about now. Getting pretty good upgrades as well. One thing enemies don't do very often in this game is get health refills. And our vehicle is no longer fragile to the point of absurdity because of that armor upgrade. So it might be in good shape for most of the rest of this run. Until I die again. Which, I'm gonna guess Cousin Eddie will get me. Now, I gotta take out Axel by doing some sick flip tricks. It's like a three times multiplier. THPS. And there's that guy, Wade. Mr. Slam. I feel like Mr. Slam is going to haunt me throughout this entire playthrough. I don't know why enemies are randomized in this game, but I 100% expected to see him in this level. And it happened. Here we are. I'll probably see him next level. And every level. Forever. Killer soundtrack. You can't go wrong with the head-on soundtrack. Um, Paris, Egypt. Doesn't really matter. I did say we were only going to urban locations, and that is Paris. Egypt is not at all urban. So, given those stipulations, I feel like I can navigate Paris a little better as well. Egypt is more open, we're in, in an abnormally slow vehicle. Neither choice is particularly preferable over the other, but whatever. I did keep all of my specials, which is many. Free shot, trying its best. If I whiff a special, one of the best things about this vehicle, you don't waste it. Why am I upgraded special? I didn't even realize that. I got it at the end of the uh, last run. So now, whenever I hit somebody with the special, hammer that attack button, they take significantly more damage. Our homing on the special is really, really good. I might consider shielding myself. Because I am vulnerable for its entire duration, and its duration has been lengthened due to the upgrade. Weapons bay full. Oh, I've only been using my special, which does not free up any slots in my weapons bay. So, that actually does make sense. There's our hated foe. To think this is his, like, weakened, balanced version. He was even more broken back in the PSP release. When the special was way, way slower. So that he could just maintain it for a super long time. That's right. Up, down. No, down, up, down. How the hell do I backfire weapons? It's... Unique. In this game, there's a code for doing uh, rear fires that no other game in the entire series uses. I think I can figure it out, but it's so easy to forget. Napalms absolutely obliterate any vehicle. Definitely need turbo, though. Now I 
and have tons and tons of napalms again. Well, gotta go for a health refill once more. Fortunately, they respawn constantly in this game. Don't know why I pronounce constantly like that. It's a Parisian pronunciation. More of a Utica expression. No, left, right, down does not rear fire in this game. And I'm trying to experiment to figure out what it is and also not die with my vehicle that is still disturbingly fragile. Down, up, down. No. Down, up, down, down. There it is. Up, down, down. Don't do that with napalms, it just drops it on yourself. But yeah, I think that was it. Up, down, down. Didn't need any weapons there. Upgraded machine gun took care of that. Yeah, it killed everybody. Machine gun's very powerful. Uh, definitely want to save. I'm still skating by on one life. Saves are pretty fast anyway. Here's where I get my game over. But it will be an honor to get annihilated by Cousin Eddie. I don't know why. Cousin Eddie's a terrible character. One of like five hillbilly characters in this game. Catfish being another one. It's the hillbilly game. And once again, the music glitch. So, you know what? Screw it. Here. A little bit of music. As we play through this. I've got that playlist open. For reasons that will be explained later. Disturbingly epic for the fact that we are not in the boss fight yet. But also quite quiet. And we'll take out all the Gene Rudishes. Him and all his hillbilly clones. He counts as like five of the hillbillies in this game. He's not going for the health refill. Okay, he was going for the health refill. Just very slowly and poorly. I should have saved that. But it'll be easier to use homing missiles to get the top hillbilly. Oh, the hillbillies on Cousin Eddie itself also count as like five hillbillies. So there's like 15 hillbillies in this game. I dramatically undersold it. I do think it hurts the top hillbilly. We'll have to try that. That might actually make this way easier. Also, nine months from Drackle, I will forgive you for being late because you are my first ever subscriber on Twitch. And that is a ridiculous amount of time to be so supportive. I appreciate it immensely. A good ridiculous. There we go. Boss fight time. We'll leave the music running because there will be no silence or no sound effects here. No voice clip. So much silence in this level. None of it intentional. Okay. Gotta try my special on that top HB. Uh, yeah, we killed him. Round his face off with our tires. That's pretty awesome. Normally that guy's a bit of a pain to get. Don't want to use that. What else do we have for missiles? Nothing much. Good idea, chat. Whoever suggested using holy missiles there. 
That was 100% the correct call. Or, uh, specials. I did not use Howie Missiles at all, so... That would not have been the correct call. Minion is not in this game, he was replaced by Cosmetti, and also, weirdly enough, Minion was meant to be in Small Brawl, we learned last week, and was replaced by Piecemeal at the last second, because, uh, Sony said, don't you dare besmirch our iconic Minion with your filthy kids game, which we have, a, like, paid you to make. Billy's all dead. The RV's almost all dead. But yeah, after Twisted Metal Black, Menion has never appeared again. Not as an enemy, not at all. It's odd. Okay, now we're gonna get in-game music again. I did not get killed by our good friend, as predicted. There is not a lot of documentation on Head On, which is weird, because there is a lot of documentation on the game that was supposed to be Head On, Harbor City. There's a huge amount of, like, developer commentary in this very game. But it all relates to Harbor City. So we don't really know why any decisions were made with regard to uh, Head On. It's all guesses, speculation, vague assumptions. No one really talks about this game. It's Bizarrely forgotten, even by itself. It has a bunch of, like, bonus material that wants to tell you how this game was made, but it doesn't. It only tells you about Harbor City. I think this is one of the only levels in the entire game that has one of those helicopters. I don't remember seeing the supply helicopters in many other levels. This is a contentious game. I know a lot of Twisted Metal Super fans who consider it far, far too easy. And others who consider it among their favorites. Personally, I'm a very big fan. But it is way too easy. So, I agree with both camps, weirdly enough. It has a really good vibe. Nice return to the uh, colorful world. A little mean-spirited towards the um, Twisted Metal 3 and 4. Sorry, I killed the music so quickly. But I personally like Twisted Metal 3 and 4, and... I would rather this game didn't try to erase them from history whilst stealing some of their best ideas and weird stuff like that. Well, Mr. Grimm can clearly jump over the wall, but I can't. He's just showing off his trick cycle. Ghost Rider ripoff that he is. I always heard that Mr. Grimm was intentionally designed to be a ripoff of Ghost Rider, the comic book character. And I've never seen any evidence to support that. Maybe they couldn't legally say that that was the case. Or maybe it's simply not the case. And very, very happy to get further support from Blast Tyrant. As we know from the months of fundraising, it is a great time for such support. 
ongoing subscribers being one of the best ways to support me. As it counts as regular income that I can sort of loosely rely upon. Obviously, you can cancel your subscriptions anytime you want. It's totally understandable. But those who opt not to do so, immensely appreciate it. Crash into a wall, trying to read chat. One of the nice things about this game being so easy. I can keep up with chat, no problem. Very little punishment. For trying to be social during a stream. Really, it's a good time for it, because everyone's renewing their subscriptions. The character doesn't provide much in the way of stuff to talk about. We have been surprisingly dominant. A lot of vehicles are close to unstoppable when they have all their upgrades. This one clearly no exception. Holy smokes. More support. Those are going to be playing for a while. <laughs> yeah, I died in the first level of this run. Which, as I noted, is one of the hardest for this character. And I have not died since. Knock on wood. Thank you so much, Dravenlock. That is really good stuff. Always dumbstruck when people actually choose to be kind. Because they could simply choose not to. I'm on the internet here. But my community has always been very supportive. Didn't I have Spectre down to like 1 HP earlier? I guess he went and got the full health. Clearly I ought to have finished him off when I had the chance. He's not using his special, luckily. Oh, he's not doing much of anything. The health refill before anyone else does. Well, we froze each other. And I broke out first. And Mr. Grimm beating me up pretty badly. There are a lot of health pickups in this level. This level's gigantic. So you do a lap of the place, you're back in full health, even if you do not have access to the full health pickup. Nice try with the skulls. You gotta aim a little better than that. Although I did forget how gargantuan Mr. Crim's uh, special is in this game. Ooh, let's have a jump off. <laughs> Collided in midair. Beautiful in a weird way. Grasshopper should be annihilated soon enough. One HP. And it's gone. GG, GH. So another level. Deathless. Getting through this playthrough disturbingly fast, but we're on to an actually sort of difficult level. No, we're not. Monaco is sort of difficult. I thought we were on to Transylvania. I always forget about Monaco. It's not an especially forgettable level. Just, this game just has a lot of levels in it. It technically has precisely as many as Twisted Metal Black. But one more required level than Twisted Metal Black. This 
because black only requires six levels for an entire playthrough. And then three of them are choices. This one requires seven for an entire playthrough. Two of them are choices. This, of course, only applies to this version, where the uh, Transylvania level exists. I'm stuck on a racer. <laughs> that guy's not going to win the race. I am lucky that I did not get grabbed there. I'm unlucky that Mr. Slam is here at all. The one on my side this whole run. Now that I know how to rear fire, might as well. I don't know how it read that as a shield input, though. Shield inputs are right, right, down, down. So I don't know how up, down, down also registered as a shield input at the same time. It was both a shield input and a rear fire. That's not even supposed to be possible. Nope. No luck on the free shot. That one worked. How did he survive with one HP there? Everyone's getting all the turbo pickups and set me on fire. A very obnoxious playthrough so far, but pretty effective nonetheless. There's a second full health refill. I don't think I want to knock down the building in order to get it. That takes a bit of a while. Once again, I think I said the same thing last time I played this level, but I do not know how many uh, health refills there are relative to each level. Because it seems like there are also a lot of health refills in this level. Perhaps every single level has the same amount of health refills except for Transylvania, which only has three. It seems like most of the other levels have the same amount, which is a lot. And they respawn very frequently. One HP again. I feel like there's an attribute of our special that no matter how much you grind it, it will leave the opponent with at least one HP. Even though I am fairly certain we have also killed people with the special. just keeps happening by sheer coincidence. So I'm hammering the special fire button and it is not locking on properly. I don't know why. Like, what are you doing here? There we go. The turbine finally worked. We gotta wait for that underglow. Yep, 1 HP again. That one felt like it definitely should have been lethal. Uh oh, Napalm right next to me. Did not think to go grab it. We'll probably see plenty more of little baby Axel. Who is legitimately human sized, but he looks tiny compared to every other vehicle, especially Hammerhead. This hammerhead is laughably oversized. Now we have the good music level. It's also pretty good in terms of design. But I'm not a fan of how few health refills there are. There we go. It seemed like the special itself did not kill Shadow. It didn't explode until it, like, bounced out from underneath us. So jury's out there. That was probably a lethal special. We know Slam can grab us while we're specialing him. Which is perfectly fun and fair. Perfectly fun and fair. I'm trying to kill myself here. <laughs> Okay, no, I'm not, but that sure was bad timing. 
I should have exploded. Fifty points of damage there. What I really need is turbo, which is right over here. Essential to survivability. I do not stand a chance of outrunning anybody without it. Ah. Thought I had the timing right. I dropped that bomb there. New weapon's very full. Let's get this health refill. Start spamming specials. Actually. Oh, I lost my tailgater. No, I didn't. There you are. Almost dead. Slam's going for some slamming. Hate to see that. Should probably stay the hell away from this bridge. Also, I'm stuck. I've not seen a lot of Warthog throughout this entire playthrough. I'm just now realizing. A little crowded over here. Now, it's Catfish Castle. Catfish is a bizarre name for this character. He's a hunter. Why is he catfishing people? Comes the drop. See if I can time a kill. Nope. Killed it too early. Couldn't have held off for another second or two. It's a shame I've only been able to show this song off in the context of the final boss fight a couple of times. Because I definitely do not want to play. PSP version of this game again. The balance is way off. Makes the game way less fun. And way longer. Once again, skating by on one life. There are some close calls there. I got close to death. This next level has more health refills, but they're very, very, very spread out. So I might not be able to get them in emergency situations. Which could prove lethal. We'll find out. Oh, I did the annoying thing that the AI always does to me. I used the free shot right as someone started their special. Now you know how it feels. I do feel like this is one of the weaker music tracks in the game. And it still definitely has a lot going for it. Weird dubstep remix of itself. But it more or less works. I did open up the dojo, as I intended. I think there's a health refill in the dojo. I so rarely open it up. I'm actually going to have to go back and check. Oh, I thought I angled myself so that I would come out of the teleporter facing towards the dojo. But as noted, I open it up so rarely, I wouldn't know. Keeping your dojo in the middle of a highway cul-de-sac that goes nowhere. 
probably not the best business plan. They are going to town for the Mo Bombs. Just abusing that uh, ability that they do not have in Twisted Metal Black. One of the few things they can't do in Black that they can do here. That's one of the things I like about this game, is that it is very, very, very similar to Twisted Metal Black. Not as well designed or as well balanced or anything, but a different flavor of Twisted Metal Black. As it was supposed to be, Twisted Metal Black 2. And they made a sharp swerve in the other direction. Late in uh, development. May or may not have noticed that I am currently frozen, and I'm unfrozen. Juggle Sweet Tooth to death. Or making me briefly stop moving. Stop by food. Which is accompanied by like a scary alien face, I think that is. Name that ink blot, I guess. It's whatever you want it to be. Oh, I finally died! It's a miracle! Of sorts. I died like instantly too. Well, nothing to do but hop back on that horse. I saw the scary alien face and it gazed into my soul. Cost me my life. Who'll do that to ya? Tempt you into oblivion, I guess. Never eat food. There's one takeaway. I don't think anyone will actually take that advice, but just in case, don't take that advice. Now to no death this, hopefully. So since what we're doing right now is redundant, unfortunately, might as well get into the remainder of this stream because we are coming up towards the end of Head On. Although the end game of this game is abnormally long. So we will be here for a bit of a while just to get people salivating and to explain the fairly complicated thing that I'm doing after we complete head-on. It is two months. I announced that last week. So, all February, I will be playing sequels that have the number two in the title. Two games that I played on Twisted Monday streams before. Yes, those are the rules. And this week, what I have planned is a very important sequel, Twisted Metal Black 2, which is sort of a cop-out. I play Twisted Metal Lost all the time, and that is the remnants of Twisted Metal Black 2, later renamed Harbor City, and then later canceled outright. So what makes this so special? Well. After I play Lost, because I am going to play it, I will then play through the leaked prototype for Harbor City. Finally. We're going to show that off on stream. And it is comprised entirely of content that is not in Twisted Metal Lost, or Twisted Metal Head-On for that matter. So new stuff that, if you haven't played it yourself, you have not seen it. extremely unfinished. This is a very unpolished prototype. But it is still interesting. I am eager to show it off. Should make for a good time. And between those two things, we'll basically have compiled the remainder of Twisted Metal Black 2 in celebration of two months. figured that was 
a hype way to get people to care about the ridiculous thing that I have set up. For two years running, second annual two month. And second to last level of the game. This I always like to point out is the level that I played as Hammerhead in the Let's Play. So everything we're about to see, we have seen before. But of course it will play out very, very differently because every time you play through this game, it plays out very differently. And here's the minigame, which unlocked Hammerhead in the first place. I did use cheating codes to get to this final level very, very rapidly. It was still a bit of an investment. And the minigame's not trivial, so beating it took a couple of tries. But there is no penalty for failing an attempt at a minigame. I've had a full inventory for multiple levels. Because I died and reloaded, it restored my inventory and all my upgrades, so... In case you're wondering why I didn't have to reclaim those after I game over. They are saved with your save file. Now if I die again, then they're gone. Kinda lucky that I did not get grabbed by Mr. Slam. He had his shovel ready for the grabbing. Changed his mind right as I bumped into him. Weird choice on his part. Oh. A remote bomb that they didn't feel like detonating. As I practically ran into it. Mr. Grimm. Unfortunately, with the ridiculous damage value, he's totally harmless in this game. Fun to play as. I'll probably play as him. Eventually. In fact, it's all but guaranteed. Did I do that already? I don't even remember. I'm fairly certain I didn't. Maybe I did. Anything's possible these days. I imagine everyone else knows better than I do. This is bad. Oh, this is the other reason that Mr. Slam is incredibly dangerous on this level. He chucks you right over the edge for significantly more damage than he ought to do. And Spectre's here. And I'm out of turbo, so Spectre can catch me from any distance, no matter what I do. I would legitimately like to hyperspace out of here, but it is not feasible. Twisted Metal 4 had some ideas that future games should have stolen and did not. But hyperspace was implemented as basically a bug fix for the fact that Twisted Metal 4 barely works. You're more likely to get stuck in walls and go out of bounds in that game than any other. Really would prefer not to die. We got the final boss coming up. So Spectre doesn't help me with ghost missiles. I can take him out. Very rapidly. And he's doing bizarre crap. Here we go. Another severe close call. But only one game over so far. Good stuff. Yeah, it's weird. I have a distinct memory of playing the full game as Mr. Grimm. Of head-on. This full game, that is to say. But I also have no distinct memory of using the Mr. Grimm special, which is the giant ball of skulls. Which is typically what I remember best. So yeah, weird. I guess I probably didn't. Although it seems like I have and should have. Ready your bongos. They're a coming. It's 
Donkey Konga Tooth. Let's take him out. As soon as I find him. There he is. It's our own pseudo grab attack on him. I think I actually wasted one of my special charges there. Obviously, we're going to have to use the special on uh, Tower Tooth. That could be ridiculous. Uh oh, I got grabbed. Been using my shield too much. Oh, he's dead. On to Tower Tooth. So place your bets. Will I jump to the top of the Tower Tooth head? Will I grind the the treads down at the bottom? Will I just sort of rumble awkwardly in the middle of Tower Tooth when I use my special on it? Firing minds want to know. No health refill between phases. Okay, that was inconclusive. All right, it puts you underneath the vehicle. Of course. Anyone who had that on their bingo card deserves, well, a full bingo right there. Unfortunately, I could not make it to the uh, health refill in time. So that was the full health refill. Would have saved me. Oh no. The rear fire is extremely powerful against this boss. So it is a good thing I've remembered how to do it. I have had runs where I legitimately could not figure out how to do it. Those were very difficult runs. So that would have been a game over as well, but I reloaded my lives. And this should... I guess I got a weapon backfire. There we go. Just sort of flop around at the base of the vehicle. Don't even worry about it. Something is happening. The boss doesn't like it. The full health should still be here. There it is. As predicted, prophecy has been fulfilled. Will these hit? Surprisingly, yes. Use our homing missiles until he shields. Finish him with a special, maybe? Come on, grind those treads. I'm not getting a lock on. This is very awkward. The game does not want me to do this, apparently. It also won't let me shield. Does my shield take up more than half my energy bar? Yeah, apparently so. There it is. It wasn't lethal though. Did he get a health refill or something? Yeah, he definitely got a health refill. Quite the health refill. Well, I'll just go grab some weapons. Put this time waster to bed. Nope, there's the shield. Speaking of being a time waster. I think I'm in the spot where he can't figure out how to get to me. 
So he just sort of goes back and forth. But I apparently can't get to him either. And he's shielded. Ugh, this is the part that sucks. Wish he had never gotten that health refill. This is not gonna help me. Get out of here, Ricochets. See, this is where the casual bongo music becomes appropriate. You are kidding me! I hate your behavior pattern, Power Tooth. I'm getting horrible luck on lock on as well. Yeah, this is ridiculous. I couldn't do anything there. Um. So officially, no full playthrough of uh, head on with Mr. Grimm, confirming my suspicions. What is with Lock-On right now? Fortunately, it didn't set me back to the first phase. That is a small mercy. Why does he have so many shield charges? Why does his shield last so long? This is like 90% a great boss. And then they amped up the damage values way too high and made it shield way, way too often. I guess I gotta go look for weapons. Our missiles are totally hopeless. That boss should have been dead like five times over. In that last attempt. That's very, very obnoxious. And the AI was working with it to prevent me from killing the boss. Because my lock-ons simply weren't happening. And the boss behavior. For one thing, was input reading and applying shields at that moment when I was doing inputs. But that is a twisted metal black move. Here comes the shield. It's got full health! In phase two! I've legitimately never seen it get to such high health during this phase. This is... This is a unique playthrough of the Tower Tooth boss fight. That's for sure. I feel like I have landed napalm shots on this boss before, but very, very rarely. This is worthless. Worthless, worthless. No valuable pickups anywhere. Tower Tooth coming to meet us. So our special is working against us now. I have to go hunting and gathering. Which makes sense. Catfish being the hunter that he is. So we'll grab this health refill, otherwise, you know, Tower Tooth will go for it. Shield, should have known. And I was using uh, machine gun fire out of habit. Could never have actually hit the boss. Napalm's totally worthless. Being an immense pain. It was going so well for so long. 
No! How is this possible? <laughs> what is going on? Okay, I've never done this in a full playthrough before. What? Okay. Screw this. One hit kill. <laughs> that was awful. Awful. <laughs> So, you didn't see anything. We killed that boss when I uh, did my special on its treads. Ten minutes ago. And we're done. See you in hell, Tower Tooth. Congratulations, Catfish. You've beaten the odds and emerged victorious in this year's Twisted Medal. You may claim your prize. Ooh, thank you, buddy. Oh, seems to me I've shot everything worth killing. For my prize, I want you to make it so I can track the last big game worth hunting. People. Wait a minute. What were you doing out there in my contest? Hunting fluffy bunnies? Hmm. It seems to me that you were not only hunting people, people were hunting you. No, man. That ain't what I'm talking about. What we did out there, that that's different. And that ain't what I'm asking for. I'm one one-on-one. -on -one, hiding in the bush. Just you and your best rifle against some real mean son of a gun. Some soon-to-be-hanging-in-your-hallway animal! <laughs> I see. Very well. <laughs> Brent. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Come here, you. <laughs> oh. going on here? I ain't no fearsome prey. Calypso screwed up. I told you. Wait a minute. That's a decoy. Good work there on that decoy move. Calypso? Okay, Zeke. Let's tie this butte to the hood and head on out of here. <laughs> he said the thing. It's head on officially. So, our poor beloved hero got decatfishated. And now he's a trophy. I want a full game about Zeke now. There should have been a head-on, too. And Zeke should have been a driver for Hammerhead, I guess. Since Catfish is dead. Maybe they should have mounted Catfish's head on the front of the Hammerhead vehicle. That would have been suitably morbid. So, yeah, a bit of an ignominious finale to that playthrough. I notice now that Catfish has his uh, ring finger on that hand in the character select screen, but in the cutscene, he was missing that finger. So he lost it during the Twisted Metal playthrough. Probably from typing in that cheat to kill Tower Tooth. Cost him a finger. Canonically. So, that is more than enough of this game. We know what's coming up. Twisted Metal Black 2 in celebration of the ongoing two month. This concludes head on. Stay tuned for Lost and Harbor City back to back. I am Fiendly and I thank you for watching Twisted Monday.